Hi, I'm Pat Keown, a Senior Research Analyst with Thomson Reuters Lipper, and I'm here to speak to you about FunFlow's activity for the week ended Wednesday, August 1st. We'll start this week's report by taking a quick look at the market activity for the week. Both the S&P 500 Index and the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed down for the FunFlow's trading week. S&P was off 1.2% and the Dow was off 0.3%. There's a fairly significant amount of economic news uh, for investors to digest this week between the being in the midst of corporate earnings season, gross domestic product coming in at 4.1%, and the Federal Reserve choosing not to raise interest rates at, the, at this month's uh, policy meeting, but indicating that they most likely will raise rates at next month's meeting. Next month's meeting, excuse me. Uh, of note among, amongst the corporate earnings was Facebook. Uh, Facebook reported uh, weaker than expected uh, quarterly revenues as well as weak user growth. This resulted in a 19% drop in, the, in its stock price and a $120 billion loss in market cap. The $120 billion, excuse me, the $120 billion loss in market cap was the single largest one-day loss in market cap in stock market history. Let's turn our attention back now to the fund flows activity for the week. We'll start by taking a look at the uh, the, the results from, the, from our macro groups. Equity mutual funds suffered net outflows of $3.8 billion. Taxable bond funds also saw money leave about $1.4 billion. Muni bond funds saw $253 million leave their coffers, while money market funds managed a small net inflow of $344 million. We'll take a closer look at each one of the macro groups now, starting with our equity funds. Uh, as, as previously stated, equity mutual funds saw net outflows for the week about $3.8 billion. It was their sixth straight weekly net outflow, which brings their year-to-date net outflow to $2.4 billion. Taking a more granular look at this week's activity, we see the long-term trend continuing with domestic equity funds experiencing more net outflows than non-domestic equity funds. Domestic equity funds saw about $3.1 billion leave. The main player there was Large Cap Growth Funds Group, which saw about $886 million uh, leave their coffers. For non-domestic equity, the outflows were slightly more muted, only about $700 million, with emerging markets accounting for roughly $240 million of that. Year-to-date, uh, it's a, almost a mirror image. Uh, Non-domestic equity funds have net inflows of $60 billion, while domestic equity funds have seen about $63 billion leave. All right, we'll move on now, take a look at our equity ETF category. Uh, net inflows for this group last week, about $5.9 billion in net new money coming in. It was their third straight weekly net inflow, which brings their uh, year-to-date net inflow to just shy of $68 billion. Major players last week were the Spider S&P 500, net inflows of $4.6 billion. The Spider S&P dividend uh, took in $1.1 billion in net new money, while conversely the financial select sector Spider saw about almost $900 million uh, in assets leave their fund, leave their ETF, excuse me. Moving on now, taxable bond funds, starting with the mutual fund group. Net outflows here again last week, about $1.4 billion. Uh, which reduced their year-to-date net inflow to just over $52 billion. Uh, contributing m the most to the net outflows last week were high-yield bond funds, as well as emerging market debt funds. Respectively, they saw about $350 million and $220 million leave their coffers. Moving on now to our taxable bond ETF group. Uh, net outflows here again last, uh, as well last week, uh, slightly more muted than the mutual fund side, only about $240 million left. Uh, again, reduced their year-to-date net inflow to just over $42 billion. Uh, we see the, the major uh, contributors to last week outflows were all iShares products, starting with the iShares tips, which had about $380 million leave. Uh, followed next by the iShares 20 plus years treasury product, which had net outflows of just about 290 million. And finally, on the plus side, we see the iShares JP Morgan US dollar emerging market uh, bond ETF taking in uh, just about $225 million in net new money. We'll mo move on to our muni bond category now. Uh, net outflows here for, for this group last week, about 250 feet excuse me, $253 million left their coffers. Uh, this reduced their year-to-date year intake to $7.1 billion. Uh, 
the largest peer groups contributing to this week's net outflows was a short intermediate uh, peer group as well as the high yield muni peer group, which saw roughly $68 million and $66 million leave respectively. Last group to look at is money market funds. Uh, the, only, the only one of the macro groups that managed a net inflow last week uh, took in just about $344 million in net new money. Uh, it was, you know, among the peer groups, we saw a lot, you know, it was mixed between the buying and the, uh, the inflows and the outflows. The largest net inflow belonged to the money market instrument fund group, which had about $3.6 billion in net new money come in while the largest outflow belonged to U.S. government money market funds, which saw $2.3 billion leave. Well, that wraps up this week's report. If you'd like to take a closer look for the data, at the data yourself, please uh, visit us at our website, which is www.lipperusfundflows.com, and please join us here again next week where another one of our analysts will be speaking about that week's fund flows activity.